All right, I'm talking to you from Edmonton. Today is April 24th, 23rd, I'm sorry, 23rd, and it's uh, 17 minutes past one o'clock in Edmonton. Uh, tell me your name, please. Uh, my name is Ashutosh Sharma. I'm uh, basically from Bangalore. Calling you, calling me from Bangalore? Yes. Okay, go ahead. What's what's going on? Uh, so actually, my wife has got admission in Dalham College, Ushawa. On Durham College. Durham College. Oh, it's a small uh, junior college. Okay. Uh, yes. So okay. she has got admission in uh, postgraduate diploma there. So uh -huh. uh, starting when? Starting when? September 2020. September of this year. Yes. Sir. Okay. So uh, the question is that uh, I mean I have majorly three questions which I I was looking out for. First is that uh, I mean you have told it many times that we, uh, you know. You can apply for open work permit along with your wife's study permit. So I just want to understand whether it is uh, fine to apply in my case, or should I wait for her to reach and start a college and after that should I apply? Okay, come to your second question. Uh, second question is regarding the funds. So I mean, uh, will there be any problem uh, if I show my funds as a gift from my parents? Okay, let's go to the third question. And the third question is that uh, when uh, uh, when a study permit is converted into postgraduate work permit without uh, job, so what are the options? Uh, what options are there for the spouse to maintain his you know uh, work permit? Are there any or not? Okay, so we will we will summarize the answers uh, step by step in for uh, for these for these questions. Before I do that, let me ask you, what is your job in Bangalore? What do you do? I'm a senior consultant, one of the big ones. Uh, what is your average salary per month? Uh, that'll be around 85K. Okay. And for how many years have you been working? Uh, it's been around uh, four or five years now. Four or five years. Uh, how old is your marriage? Uh, one year. One but year. Yes, we uh, actually we know each other from last I think 14, 15 years. Uh, we were classmates, and then we were in a relationship from last four years. Okay. And, and you and you are you and your wife are living together right now in Bangalore. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, how much uh, how much money are you showing in your savings account as cash liquid funds? Uh, my savings that is like around 50k, but as a gift, I'll be showing somewhere between 8 to 10 lakh apart from GIC and the fees. Okay, let, let me let me just uh, hear this one more time. I'm sorry, you have 50,000 rupees as my savings as, your as savings. a gift. As gift, uh, I'll be showing somewhere between 8 to 10 lakh apart Who? from GIC and uh, okay. okay, that's fine. Who is who is making this gift to you? Uh, uh my parents. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, based on all this all this uh, information that you, just a minute. Based on all this information that you told me, uh, I think I think as uh, uh, as a decision maker to 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 judge whether they should go together as one single application or individually, I would I would uh, go against uh, applying together uh, because there is a risk that they will deny you. Uh, there's small risk, but not much. I, I, the reason is uh, you do not have sufficient liquid funds, cash funds to take to Canada along with your wife. So your wife has to show a one year tuition fees for the college where she is going uh, and GIC for $10,000. So that is a separate issue for the husband to accompany the wife. You need more money than just 50,000 rupees and gift from your father, which is sometimes they do accept the gift, but it looks like very suspicious to the visa office, uh, which will look at this that, you know, why was this gift made all of a sudden? I think just for the matter of fact that they want to enable the the husband to qualify for for the funds 
but if this gift was made maybe last year or six months ago and you had this this money as old funds in your account it would not have been problem so let's let me just rephrase this if you had close to eight to ten lakh rupees cash in your savings account right now either as accumulated savings from your salary or mm -hmm. old gift made by your family member to you i would have said both husband and wife can apply it together no problem at all but since okay. but since this gift will be made contingent upon something and based on to coincide with the timing of the study visa i don't like i don't like the smell of it and i think i will advise you against to apply together but the law does provide people to apply together if they if they fulfill all the conditions in your case your case is slightly weak on the funds and that's why i'm little circumspect and little careful about you know i don't want you to take risk on getting refused but if she goes along and maybe after a month or two perhaps a semester who knows uh till the time if you have you know more solid bank history with more liquid funds coming in i think it will it will be a better for your application so that's my uh summarized answer let's look at your second question on you said that uh, uh, one of the question was that i think second or third one of the question was how does the husband maintain his own status while the study uh, either while the while the study is ongoing for a wife right is that what you said so, uh, so go ahead when when wives convert from study permit to post graduate work permit without job okay so so the wife so when once the wife gets a post graduate study permit you are right in in assessing that a job is a critical part of her sponsorship for you so when she gets the post graduate work permit she has to herself get a job a skill job uh, where she is and then that will allow you to get a dependent status uh, which is category uh, which is code C41 but if she does not have a job then your you know you you lose the right of holding the work permit on your own but while the time she is just a student then you will get the work permit and then you can work anywhere you know whatever you want to do so that that is a little uh, clarification what was the second question we answered the third question i think we skipped the second uh, question second question was i mean it was related to funds only that uh, how would it affect my application if let's say if i'm not applying with my along with my wife i'm applying to yeah so we we already we already answered that question so when w- once you allow your wife to proceed on her own before you you have more time to consolidate your fund situation uh and then you know be in a better financial uh you know readiness uh maybe come december or january of next year hopefully this coronavirus might, might have faded out by the time but you will be in a better position okay. so uh the documents from your side uh what what you know in in a perfect world what we need from the applicant side is uh we need your job letter we need your income slips pay slips uh as as long as possible maybe for 6 months 12 months we need proof that this money has been deposited as a salary in, into your savings account uh we also would like to see your income tax return for the similar amounts of income for the past uh, you know maybe one year two years at the least on mm-hmm. top of that uh, a bank statement printed uh, a full bank statement not like a just a statement a full bank statement uh, showing debit and credit debit and credit all all across all pages for the last 12 months showing clearly where all this money is coming from so we would like okay. to see that 80 80000 85000 being deposited into your uh, into your account as showing as a salary credit so i'm hoping that you have been working long so you will have increments of accumulated savings totaling up to 2 lakh 3 lakh 4 lakh 5 lakh or something i mean i mean think of this if you are making 80 80 grand a, a, a month i'm hoping you know for the past many years uh we expect that you know it is very possible that you may have paid for your wife from your own account that's why you have depleted your account but now 
is not the time to take chances and you need to re refurnish your your account boost up your funds to that level and then apply you know individually and separately okay and so uh, one more thing sir for gif what are the documents we do we need to uh, uh, i mean what documents are required to show uh, uh, amount as a gif do we need a affidavit or just a letter will be fine from where the uh, form for, uh, for gift uh, oh, from the money just a, just just a regular letter regular self descriptive letter is enough many people like to get notarized and other affidavit it is i think a overkill it's not needed uh, but just a regular letter on a plain microsoft document that you know this is this is who i am i'm giving my you know son a gift that's that should be fine you know proof that you know maybe he paid through a check or through rtgs online or something maybe proof how it was paid that's all okay and if let's say if we have our fds and all so should we liquidate those fds or just show it as fds i mean if you have if, if you have fds this is the time to liquidate them i would like to see liquid cash fds don't impress anybody fds are time bound deposits that has to be unlocked to get the money out of it uh, i think the visa office uh, plays premium on liquid funds uh, rather than something which is blocked so uh, if you have fds you must cash them oh. sure sir. uh i think that those were my queries i mean you have already uh, answered that and i'm following you from last i mean so many years now okay <laughs> thanks a lot okay. thanks a lot, i hope sir. i hope i i hope you uh i hope you got the answers that you what you're seeking and then yes. now and now you can move move forward to your ambitions sure sir Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.